New Zealand already has some of the highest yields for apple production per hectare in the world. Now plant and food research, along with key New Zealand fruit industry organisations, is trialling a new way of growing apples that will potentially double the yields for our top varieties. New Zealand orchards are considered the most productive in the world from world benchmarking. And they uh, have something like 60 tonnes per hectare average productivity, but our best producers currently produce around 100 tonnes per hectare, some of them even 110 tonnes per hectare. But the physiological theory around utilisation of sunlight tells us that if we can capture the majority of the sunlight, we can actually increase productivity probably to somewhere between 160 and 200 tonnes per hectare. That's the scientific question that we're trying to attack. This project actually involves more than just apples and pears. It does involve cherries and apricots and there's a dimension in kiwi fruit as well. But here we're talking about apples predominantly. It's the model system that we're using. It got underway two and a half years ago uh, with a, a major grant from MBIE, from the government, and a lot of co-funding support from our industry organisation, in particular Pit Fruit New Zealand. We've got a lot of interest. We do have some orchard companies now who are planting trial plantings of something like a hectare. Um, we, we've got one orchard with, with one of our new pears who's actually planted four hectares uh, on the basis of two years of data and, uh, and uh, being reasonably uh, courageous um, and, and interested in this. Um, we are getting very important um, biological information every year um, and I can say from that information, particularly from our measurement of light uh, relations in the canopy, uh, light interception, light distribution, that um, even at only our oldest trees are only three years old, but we know we are on track physiologically for where we're headed for, so, so far so good. What we're trying to do is to take our productivity potential up towards the biological limits. We're here in a typical intensive dwarf tree orchard. We've actually spent quite a lot of time developing this tree structure. It's called a tall spindle. It's a simple central leader with uncomplicated branches coming off up the tree, not too many of them, about six per metre of canopy. These um, are very good for capturing light and also distributing light within the tree, which is really important for fruit quality. There's a quite a wide grass strip, and, and these trees, they'll grow to three and a half metres tall, but we're planted about three to three metres apart in the row. And that's um, partly because of the tree design, but also actually for vehicular access. We've got to get big tractors, um, large bins, more particularly um, uh, mulches for prunings and, and crop sprayers. And this is a reasonably complicated canopy for spray penetration and for things like that. So we need to design the tree in a way that is practical to work with, but also can increase the amount of light that we can capture into the apple tree and grow the fruit. The biggest single thing that's going to change that is bringing the rows closer together. Here at the new system in its third year, so it's the second cropping year, and here we're also looking at a, a row spacing of two metres between rows, uh, which is actually a wider spacing than we're using, and we're looking at the light rig. This is how we take measurements of the amount of sunlight that the trees are using. We actually measure not the light that the trees are using, but the light that the tree doesn't use. We measure with that array of sensors uh, the light that misses the tree canopy and we compare that to above canopy sensor, which is measuring the total amount of radiation coming in. We can't extrapolate to a full mature tree yet, but we're at about 50% canopy fill now, and our, our closest spacings are running at about 42 to 45% light interception. If we do the arithmetic, that means that at a full canopy, we could be up as high as 90%. That would be exceptional. <laughs> We're in the new planting system. These are three-year-old trees. We've designed a tree into a two-dimensional tree, almost like a grapevine. The first thing that a grower would notice coming in here is claustrophobia, because there's only one and a half metres between the rows. This is the most extreme close spacing that we're using. It is a type of espalier, but it's an espalier designed with a lot of physiological knowledge and information. There's a lot of discussion around is the whole trellis system and the tree system strong enough to carry the kind of crops we're talking about? That's a very good question that the growers are asking and um, we will find out. Uh, we think that we're going to have enough structure and enough strength within the tree and within the 
trellis system. We've got very big anchors that we retrofitted when we realised we needed to put some serious support in there to maintain the tension on the trellis. There is a surprising amount of strength in the cordon structure itself. It acts like a, almost like a fishing rod under tension, so it has a lot of tensile strength. We have some ideas of some supplementary support in here, which would be very cheap if we actually needed it in the, in the distance the farthest from each of the tree trunks. But we're reasonably confident that we will be able to carry the fruit load. The other thing that growers immediately say, and it's a very good practical question, how do I get my bin down here to pick my fruit into? How do I get my tractor and sprayer and mower down here? And uh, they're good questions because they won't fit here at the moment. So when we talk about a whole systems change, we do include needing to rethink some of the equipment and how we do jobs. Um, we would like to think that we could move to lower horsepower equipment because it's much smaller. Our spraying technology can change because our target is very close and very uncomplicated compared to a tree. We're about to move into, into getting advice on that from our spray technologists. So lots, there's lots and lots of things other than just the tree and the fruit to worry about. As we move forward with the scientists in developing the system, we'll be asking, have we got data on how we need to manage these trees? What we feed them, what we give them for water, their water requirements and, and everything. But in a way, the tree's still the tree, it's just we're changing the way it grows. So it still should, the, the requirements should be similar, but we just might need to tweak it. The interest in the industry is quite immense. They're not running out and saying, this is the way we have to go, but they are interested in looking and learning about it. The tag groups that we set up, we started with a, a, a number of invites just to get some people in and get them going, and then other people have approached us and said, can we come along? And it's definitely open door policy. Anyone can come who wants to. Right now, we are currently ranked as the most competitive industry in the world. Uh, for, in global means. We're in the top 10 exporting nations for pip fruit um, and we're very innovative. So everyone else is trying to catch us up. We're doing very well at the moment, but we know we can do better and this is going to help us do better. If we just uh, sit back and kick our feet up and say we're just simply the best, before we know it, we're an ageing rock star and someone else is gone and singing a new tune and doing it better. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.